Hello, my name is Kerry with Mount Comfort RV Sales. We're going to go through as far as how to set up a, the Shasta travel trailer. Uh, basically what you're going to do is when you get to your destination, you're going to unhook the vehicle from the, the truck or the, your vehicle and then you're just going to kind of eyeball it as far as how, if it's level. I generally would try to keep the front a tad lower than what the back is because then we're going to go back and set the back jacks. Back jacks you're going to pull out and swing down pull the lever down and let it hit the ground and then you got to come over and do the other side <clears throat> now you got this little cheater bar we can put in here and then that way we can add tension to the jack and you just now these are just strictly stabilizers all you want to do is just put a little pressure onto it so that it helps stabilize the trailer. Then you have to go back to the other side and do the other side. And just put a little pressure and that's all you got to do as far as that goes. All right, we'll leave that there. Now, if you want to, I get a little level and put in here and then we can raise the front in order to level the trailer. And that will put a little bit more pressure onto the back jacks. So now you got the vehicle stabilized. The other thing is, is that before you do this, if you're off from side to side, you want to put boards underneath the tires. And then that way you can drive up on the boards to level it from side to side. Then you're going to unhook the vehicle and then just do the back jacks like we just did. All right. Okay, this time you can turn your LP tank on. Uh, this is for your furnace, stoves, refrigerator, and so on. So you can turn those on. Got a front compartment. This is basically underneath the dinette on the inside, so you have access from the inside and the outside as well. This is the back of the refrigerator. This runs off of 110, 12 volt, and LP gas. This is a drain tube for the fins inside, so as they do moisture, you get condensation on the fins, they're going to drip into a tray, and then it's going to drip outside. So you want this tube constantly on the outside of the vent door. Okay. Now we are using heat to cool the unit, so we don't want to block these vents here in any way, shape, or form. Don't put any kind of a screen mesh over it or on the back side of it because that blocks the ventilation and the refrigerator is not going to work properly. So anytime that the refrigerator is in use, we've got to keep these vent doors open or clear. Lug nuts are torqued at 105 pounds or 100 pounds and then the, the tire pressure is at 50 pounds. Outside receptacle. So you have 110 receptacles on the outside of the coach if you want to plug in patio lights when you do the awning. This is a vent for the uh, battery, which is on the inside of the coach, which we'll show you later. And then your tail lights. You have cable satellite hookup. This is an inbound, so if you go to a campground and they have satellite hookup or cable hookup, take a piece of coax, hook up to their jack, hook onto this. This will feed the coach from the outside source. Then you have another storage compartment here on the outside. This uh, pretty much goes all the way across the back, other with the exception of the battery, so you got some more storage there. This is the furnace. You have the intake and the exhaust. It all lights from the inside of the trailer. Power cord. The power cord separates from the trailer. So in other words, you'll have to coil it up and then put it in a compartment. But then when you hook it up, it's just what we call a marine cord. You have two terminals here and one with the hook. So just align them up, push it in, and then twist, and then screw the cat locking cap on. And that'll keep the cord onto the trailer. Okay, now your cord, <coughs> like in this case, we're using an extension cord. But on the end of the cord, it has a little blue light so that you know you got power going to it. Always take the cord, don't leave it coiled up real tight. If you're using an extension cord, just un loop it in big loops and then put it up underneath the coat so it's out of the way. Right down here you have your termination valves. So you have a smaller valve which is on the left which says waste, that's your sink and your shower. 
sewer outlet, which is on the right, is your toilet, what we call the black water tank. So you're going to twist the cap off, put your sewage hose on, always dump the sewage first. These are nothing more than pull valves you pull out to open, you push in to close. Do the sewage, close the valve, then do the gray water, that rinses out the tank. Or it rinses out your sewage hose as, the, as well as the tank. Now if you're hooked up, if you have a uh, permanent hookup here at your campsite, leave your sewage valves closed because if you leave the sewage valve open, your liquids go out but your solids and your papers start stacking at the bottom of the tank. So you want to leave that closed so that you build up enough fluid that when you do dump it, you've got enough fluids to dump everything out. But always dump the sewage first, close the valve, then dump the gray water, that rinses out the hose. This is your fresh water tank fill. This is water that you carry with you, so if you're on the road, you can put a little bit of water in there. So if you stop at a rest area, you can use your own facilities. This is your city water hookup. This is direct pressure. So you want to use a white RV hose so that you don't get the rubber taste like you do in a garden hose. When you hook up to here, you want to have a water regulator to regulate the pressure inside, going into the side of the coach, and then you hook it up here. This is direct pressure. This is using the pump. This is the vent for the back of the air conditioner. This is your hot water heater. Drain plug, which is going to go in here so that we don't lose water. So you'll make sure that's in. And then you're going to fill it whether you use city water or whether you use the, the, the pump. Once it fills, it's going to, you know, you have a bypass valve on the back side for winterization, which we're going to show you that later. But you're going to put the plug in, fill it up, you have a switch on the inside, and this, this particular one here works off electricity and LP gas. So you have a switch on the inside to decide which way you want to go. This is a heat sensor. We want this left out here. If this tube gets blocked and flame comes up here, this will sense the flame and shut the water heater off. And you have a thermostat here. These are preset. You cannot adjust them. This one's set at 140. And then you have a backup one at 180. And this is your pop-off valve, igniter board, igniter, burner tube, and gas valve. These are safety chains to hook up to the truck when you're hooked up. This is your light cord. This is going to plug into the vehicle. This is going to give you lights and brakes, turn signals. This is a breakaway switch. This you're going to hook up to the vehicle. If this pulls away from this switch, it's going to set the brakes on the trailer. So if we have the, this hooked up to the vehicle and the trailer separates from the vehicle, it will pull the pin and set the brakes on the trailer. Always keep this inside no matter what.